Hello and welcome to Insight of Thermology. This is Dr. Amrit welcoming you to another important lecture on slit lamp examination techniques. Today we are studying the specular reflection and how do we do specular reflection in a slit lamp. After this video, you shall be knowing all the important points about specular reflection and how to do it in slit lamp. So what is meant by specular reflection? The specular reflection is basically defined as a type of surface reflectance. So it is actually described as a reflection of light which is occurring from a surface which is as smooth as mirror. Okay, so what happens when the light is incident on a smooth surface as that of a mirror is that when the light comes like this, this is the incident ray and almost the entire incident light is going to be reflected back from the mirror like surface in the same direction into a single outgoing ray and that is called the reflected ray. Now because all the incident light is getting reflected out from the mirror in one direction, the reflection is very strong and such a strong reflection which causes a bright dazzling light effect is called the specular reflection. Now let us try to understand this using these images. So the first picture over here is that of a mirror. Now uh, let us consider this to be the normal or a perpendicular to the mirror and you can see that the incident ray is falling like this C at an angle of I from the normal and when the angle uh, when the incident ray is incident on this mirror the entire rays are going to get reflected from the normal at an angle R in such a way that the angle of incidence is equal to angle of reflection. And whenever this angle of incidence is equal to angle of reflection, the reflected ray will cause a very bright dazzling reflex and that reflex is called the specular reflection. Now in the second picture you can see a surface which is not as smooth as that of the mirror. However here you can see there are so many ridges and there are so many troughs and ridges here. Now because of that the light rays which are passing on to this, the light rays which are incident onto this rough surface are not going to get reflected in one direction. Because of the irregularity of the surface they are going to get reflected in different directions because of which the light, uh, the, even the, the resultant light or the resultant reflected light ray that you get will be in multiple directions and you do not get any bright dazzling effect what you see in specular reflection. Here the type of reflection that you get is more of a diffuse reflection. Okay, So I hope you understand what is the difference between a specular reflection and what is a diffuse reflection. Specular reflection is occurring from a smooth surface like that of a mirror whereas a diffuse reflection occurs because of an irregular surface. So what exactly is the principle of specular reflection when we use it to study cornea in the slit lamp? The main principle that we are seeing over here is the angle of incidence should be angle equal to the angle of reflection. Okay, and based on that, we are going to study the quality of the reflection that we get. So once we study the quality of reflection that we get from the surface, from that we can derive the quality of the reflecting surface. So based on the reflection that is coming from the anterior part of the cornea, from the posterior part of the cornea that is the endothelium or from the lens, we can actually tell what is the quality of the cornea and what is the quality of the surface of the lens. So that is what is the governing principle behind the specular reflection in slit lamp. Let's assume that we want to observe specular reflection at this part of the cornea. So this is the illumination system of the slit lamp which is projecting a ray at this point at an angle of alpha from the normal and the rays are going to get reflected from this and they're going to pass into our eyes through this binocular slit lamp biomicroscope, right? Now the specular reflection will only occur if this emergent ray which is coming out from the eye is also uh, forming an angle of alpha that's equal to the incident angle with the normal. So when this angle of incidence will become angle or uh, will become equal to the angle of reflection, what we will get is the specular reflection. So this is very important. The observation and the illumination system should have same angle to the perpendicular axis. Now this need not be, the configuration need not be always like this. It can also be perpendicular like this. Suppose you want to observe a structure over here in the cornea. So your biomicroscope is present here and the illumination system is present here at an angle from the biomicroscope. 
and you're going to keep on moving the illumination system from left to right till you get a bright dazzling reflex once you get that bright dazzling reflex it means that that is the specular reflection and that specular reflection will only occur when the angle of incidence is equal to the angle of reflection now the question is that how do you actually identify that it is the uh, specular reflection only and not any other normal reflected light coming from the cornea the answer is that when you observe a dazzling light reflex it is often advised that you close one of your eyes and try to observe the reflex from the other eye so a normal or a regular uh, specular reflection or a specular reflex will only be seen through one eyepiece if you are seeing the reflex through both the eyepieces of the binocular slit lamp then it means that probably you are not looking at the specular reflection it is just a normal reflection okay a normal uh, uh, a regular specular reflection should always be seen only through one eyepiece and should not be visible through the other eyepiece so what i mean to say is that the specular reflection is actually a monoocular method of examining the cornea you should not keep your both eyes open and try to look at a specular reflex now the next uh, thing what I told you is that the quality of reflection that we are obtaining from the different layers of the cornea particularly here we are observing the anterior layer that is the epithelium and the posterior layer of the cornea that is the endothelium okay so the quality of specular reflex that we get from these surfaces will tell you the surface quality of the reflecting surface will tell us that whether the epithelium or endothelium of the cornea is normal or not. So now coming to what are the uses of specular reflection. So this specular reflection can actually be used to understand the lipid layer of the tear film. Okay, by observing the movement of that lipid layer of the tear film on the cornea. Then you can also observe the tear meniscus. Then we can also observe the anterior cornea and its regularities and irregularities. Okay, then the endothelium of the cornea can be also studied by using the specular reflection. Apart from that, the contact lens wettability uh, factor can also be studied using the specular reflection. So here, when we talk about the lipid layer of the tear film, the tear meniscus, the irregularities of the anterior cornea, the contact lens wettability, here what we are trying to see is the anterior specular reflection. That means the reflection which is coming out from the anterior surface of the cornea, that is the epithelium and the tear film. Whereas when we are studying the corneal endothelium, we are carrying out the specular reflection at the endothelium level, that is the posterior part of the cornea. So that is very important. Now, before we go into the uh, how to do the specular reflection, it is very important for you to know the parts of the slit lamp. So, at this point, it is advisable that you pause the video and probably look at the different parts of the slit lamp. So now, how to do a specular reflection on a slit lamp? Now, to understand how to do a specular reflection, you should have a basic idea about the Perkin J images. These Perkin J images are nothing but they are the images or the reflected images from the uh, of the illuminating system on the cornea okay so illuminating system will have a bulb so the image of the bulb is produced on the cornea and those are called the Perkin J images based on the surfaces on which they are actually occurring so the first Perkin J images will uh, come from the anterior part of the cornea and the posterior surface of the cornea will form the second Perkin J image the third Perkin J image will come from the anterior surface of the lens and the posterior surface of the lens will form the fourth Perkin J image so this is very important now, uh, when you try to make a corneal section on the surface of the eye, or what I mean to say is optical section, you will often observe a very bright corneal reflex occurring in front of it. Now, that bright corneal reflex is nothing but it is the first Perkin J image. Now, observation of this first Perkin J image is very important because this is very important for you to proceed in your um, task of specular reflection. So the first thing that you're going to do is either take an optical section on the cornea or a parallel pipe uh, section on the cornea and here you can see this is a focused uh, optical section of the cornea and in front of that you can see the small image uh, probably faint in this picture is the first Perkin J image right so it's very important to notice that. <laughs> 
the next thing that you're going to do is you're going to try to move your optical section on to the uh, Perkin J image by moving the illumination system now at this point you don't want to move your binocular uh, or the viewing system and just move the illuminating system and this can be achieved by using the decoupling device on the slit lamp so now as the so the optical section is going to move on that per kg image you are going to see this bright bright sharp dazzling light okay so you're approximating the optical section on to the per kg image that we obtained over here so you're moving your optical section towards this so once you do that you're going to see a sharp specular reflection so at this point what has happened is that the angle of incidence has become equal to the angle of reflection and again you can confirm it by closing your one eye because as i told you that the specular reflection is basically a monocular method so you are going to see this two sharp dazzling lights like this one is coming from the anterior part of the cornea which is the epithelium and one is coming from the posterior part which is called the endo Ethereum, right now to uh, to see it properly you might even want to probably widen the slit and widening of the slit as i told you can be done with the slit lamp with controller now at this point i want to tell you that the anterior epithelium will actually be reflecting more light and the specular reflection which is coming from the anterior epithelium will often be very whitish in color and it will be uh, more whitish and more reflected however the specular reflection that you get from the endothelium will be fainter and also yellowish in color now the specular to get a proper specular reflection and to study the cells it is obviously def very difficult but you have to increase the magnification to about 40x so this is the endothelium surface you can see this is how a normal endothelium will look like and this is how the normal reflection from the endothelium will look like now however in the first picture you can see the epithelial and the endothelial reflection they seem to be merging together now once if you want to separate the interfaces for a better reflection what is advisable is that you increase the angle of illumination that means you increase the angle between the illumination system and the viewing system once you increase the angle of illumination it will decrease the interface reflection so you uh, tend to get this better demarcation line between the reflection coming from the epithelium and what is coming from the endothelium so as you can see this is the endothelium uh, which is uh, which is a normal endothelium on the specular reflection so now let us see individually how can you actually uh, use the specular reflection so here as i told you the pre-corneal tear film can be studied using the specular reflection so these lipid tear film particles can be seen actually moving in front of the corneal surface with every blink of the patient again you can study the tear meniscus you can see the reflected light from the tear meniscus using the specular reflection Again, you can see this, this picture over here, this eye, this is not how a normal specular light should look like. This should look like this, okay? But here you can see it is quite broken uh, kind of reflex, a diffuser reflex compared to what a compact uh, first Perkin J image would look like, probably indicating that this is a hazy cornea, maybe corneal edema or irregularity of the corneal epithelium. Now in the second picture you can see the first cornea is quite clear and this is a normal Purkinje image but in the second cornea you can see it is more diffuse uh, Purkinje image because of the presence of corneal edema. Similarly contact lens wettability can also be studied. A normal uh, healthy contact lens placed on a healthy cornea with good wettability will show a Purkinje image like this and will have a good uh, specular reflection however uh, a contact lens which is displaced and which is dehydrate the cornea which is dehydrated uh, uh, will show a specular reflection like this you can see so many folds on the uh, contact lens and probably on the anti epithelium of the cornea as well because of the dehydration factor that's all for today thank you and have a nice day